So as I mentioned in the last video, I was uh, getting some new boards uh, uh, built from the redesign that I've, I've got up on the uh, on the GitHub repo. Um, and uh, unlike the previous board, instead of using the um, uh, ESP32A1S, I'm going to use a uh, an ESP32 uh, S3 actually for this one, and uh, a PCB Artis. Uh, uh, codec board. Um, so they'll actually go on the reverse side of the board here uh, and uh, so they'll be on this side of the board. Uh, here's the sort of the input and the output. Um, there's that little low pass filter there. Um, and the rest of the board is uh, very similar to before with the exception I moved this uh, SI5351 uh, well away from the audio circuitry this time to see if that uh, that improves things. We'll see, of course. Um, I'm probably not going to go through a sort of a detailed build like I did with the original board. Um, you've kind of seen that before, and uh, I kind of kind of uh, uh, don't want to go through all that again. Um, but I will come back uh, and uh, sort of just go through as I build up portions of the board and uh, kind of just show progress. Uh, what I hope to at least get to in this video is uh, putting the Taylor detector on. I won't do the RF switch this time. I'm just going to put the Taylor detector on. I'm going to inject a uh, an RF signal into there. Get the SI5351 on. I'll bypass the audio switch and just confirm that uh, I'm not getting those... Uh, strange artifacts uh, with this board. So anyway, uh, that's coming right up. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, a progress report on the board. Uh, like I said, I won't go through and test each part on the video, but as you can see, I've got the power circuitry on board. And if you turn the board over, you can see this is how the uh, ESP32 and the PCB artists mount to the board. There's that little low pass filter, and there's the, uh, there's the input side. Now I have actually tested this um, uh, running a, a simple uh, uh, sine wave generator in here and I am getting a nice clean output uh, here and here. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll move on to um, putting, getting the uh, Taylor detector, get the splitter installed, um, get all that uh, wired up and then I'll directly inject a signal into uh, the input side of the splitter um, and then we'll do some bypassing here, bypassing of this audio switch um, and uh, we'll see what we see. Okay, another quick update, uh, as you can see I've got the uh, SI5351 board uh, and this time I decided to solder it in um, to get the best, uh, the best connection possible um, and I've just tested this and uh, it's outputting a nice uh, clean signal. So. Okay, so the Taylor detectors installed right here. There's the uh, FST3253, the op amp and the capacitors. Here's the splitter. And uh, I'm injecting a signal right here which goes uh, to uh, this point on the splitter and then obviously it goes into the Taylor detector itself. So let's just have a quick look at the, uh, at the input there. So there you can see an input 14.201. Uh, I've got the local uh, oscillator running at 14.2 so we should see a mixed product of around about a kilohertz and you can see right there there's that uh, there's that mixed product uh, right there um, uh, obviously uh, in quadrature so let's just uh, just to confirm it's all working so as you can see the yellow trace is leading the purple trace um, and then if I go down in the input frequency. Now I'm at 14.199 megahertz. You can see the purple traces, traces leading the yellow. So anyway, that confirms that the uh, Taylor detector is working. Okay, so I'm ready to test uh, the output of the Taylor detector through DSP uh, with that uh, phase shift plus add, which uh, removes uh, the unwanted sideband. And I've simply got the audio switch um, I've just simply got a couple of wires here that connect the output of the Taylor detector to the input of the uh, uh, of the PCB artist codec here, and then I'm sampling on the output of the uh, PCB artist. So this audio switch is effectively out of circuit. 
Okay, so my uh, injected RF signal, uh, let me just pan up to that quickly. You can see it up there is at 14.2 megahertz at minus 60 dBm. And uh, let me just adjust my uh, LO so that it's down. Let's start around about here. So we're on upper sideband, so what you're going to see here is the suppressed uh, upper sideband. Let me just go to lower sideband. And there's a nice clean signal there at 2 kilohertz. Okay, so let's zoom into that a little bit so you can see it uh, a little more clearly. Uh, so as I said, we're on, uh, we've got 14.2 uh, megahertz coming in the, uh, uh, as the input RF, uh, mixed with a 14.202 um, local oscillator, and I'm, we're looking at the lower sideband there. So there is it, there it is suppressed. And there it is, uh, um, the lower sideband. So let's uh, have a look and make sure, and I've already made sure, so uh, so it's good, um, that we don't have any of those nasties around about uh, 10. As you can see, that there's some there's some stuff there, but it's actually this is actually coming from the RF and not uh, and not some sort of harmonics in the circuit itself. And you know, just to prove that, I'll disconnect the um, the input RF and you will see that signal go goes away there we go I'll plug it back in again so this circuit does not have the strange harmonics that we had on the other circuit which is a good thing so let's have a look now at uh, what exactly that um, uh, uh, unwanted sideband suppression is in dBs Okay, so here's the um, the FFT display of the outputted audio signal, uh, and you can see uh, the difference between the unsuppressed sideband and the suppressed sideband is around about that's 32 minus. Uh, where are we? Excuse me, it's just. Uh, Taken a while, so minus three to uh, minus three point three to thirty two. So not great. Around about twenty eight, twenty nine dBs of suppression. I had hoped for better than that. Now, interestingly, um, I uh, I did play around with. Let me just pan down. You can see uh, so you can see what I'm talking about here. I did play around with the uh, value with these um, output resistors here on because what I noticed when I first started this up is that um, there was some significant variation in the values of these uh, of these resistors and uh, so I did get around about 3 dBs better suppression by matching these guys here now obviously there's a lot else involved here um, uh, you know, these aren't particularly matched. You've got these two 10K resistors here. I'd have to match them. And then there's these four output capacitors here. So kind of a lot of variation possibly uh, in here. Uh, now, this little pot here does adjust, does do some amplitude uh, balancing between the two channels. But kind of what my suspicion is, is there's also some... some uh, uh, not quite 90 degree phase offset uh, in the output here so that's what could be causing the uh, uh, you know the lack of uh, better unwanted uh, sideband suppression but anyway uh, the good news is the um, uh, the nastiness that I was seeing in the last circuit has, appears to have completely gone away um, so I'll, <laughs> I'll leave you all to theorize why that could be there's just so many variables um, I think my main suspicion is the way that I had the ESP32A1S in the last board hooked up. Um, uh, that was, you know, that was, I think, what was contributing to that. But anyway, this is good progress. Um, I will um, uh, call this video a halt here. Um, and I'm going to, uh, kind of the next video, I'll, I'll make sure when I put the audio switch in uh, that it still continues to work and I'm not getting any nasties. Uh, I'll put the RF switch in and so on and so forth. So basically I'll build it back to um, 
where we were in the uh, in the last uh, series of videos with the uh, with the uh, receiver that was malfunctioning. So anyway, that's all for this video. I, I did want to give a quick update because uh, I got these new boards in and I was excited to see uh, if they'd improve the situation. Now, uh, I will actually be going to Australia for most of the month of July, so there won't be any uh, videos during uh, during July. Obviously, I won't have <laughs> any of my gear with me. Um, so anyway, um, uh, I'll, I'll see you all uh, when I get back. Well, I'll see you all virtually, I suppose. Um, and like I said, next video, I'll put the audio switch, the RF switch in, and uh, we'll see if we can get this receiver on the air. Anyway, that's all for now. Catch you later.